Hi, I've got a bit of a problem. I've got one of these uh, 18650 rechargeable lithium ion batteries. You're no doubt familiar with these. They're used inside torches and laptops and all sorts of products these days. But actually, I got this out of a torch I've got, and that's the only product I've got which uses an 18650, believe it or not. So I don't actually have a purpose designed charger for this thing, and it's just gone flat. So what am I supposed to do? No worries. We've got a lab power supply. Beauty. Let's see if we can charge it. Now charging these 18650 cells or any lithium ion or lithium polymer cells can actually be quite dangerous if you don't do it correctly. So click here if you haven't seen my video, it's an old one, on a complete tutorial on how to charge uh, lithium ion batteries. So this will just be a quick video on how to use a lab power supply uh, to actually charge these things relatively safely. And by the way, what I'm going to show you here not only works for uh, 18650 cells, it works exactly the same for lithium polymer lipo uh, cells as well, which you get in all sorts of remote control stuff and things like that. They're basically identical from a charging point of view. Now this particular one from Lumentop actually has a built-in protection circuit and it's in the end cap here and sometimes they're actually uh, slightly longer in length than your regular ones that don't have the uh, protection circuit in them. And uh, this will actually mostly protect the thing but we're not going to rely on that today. We're going to assume that we're using a charging an 18650 cell that doesn't have any protection built in. So we have to know what, exactly what we're doing. Now, Lumentop don't actually have a data sheet for this thing, but it does tell us that it's a Panasonic uh, NCR18650B cell. It does say it uses Panasonic cells in particular. So, bingo, we can actually get the data sheet for this Panasonic cell. So the specs, rate of capacity, 3200 milliamp hours. They've put 3400 milliamp hours. Nah, I don't know. We might not have the exact data sheet. They might have like an upgraded cell, or it could just be marketing wank. Who knows? Anyway, um, it is going to have all the data we need for the charging and we've got a charging graph as well. Beauty. Now it must be said that not all 18650 cells are identical in terms of uh, charging. Some, some can be, uh, d they're designed to be charged at a higher rate. Others might have a slightly different voltage depending on the chemistry in there. And I won't go into any of the details because as I said, I've done a, like a 40 minute video um, explaining all the ins and outs of lithium ion charging. So go watch that. But We'll do a quick overview. So there's two things you need to know to charge a lithium ion battery like this. You need to know its nominal uh, charging voltage, which is critical. This one is 4.2 volts. As I said, it can change depending on slight chemistry differences and other manufacturing differences. But 4.2 is pretty much the majority out there are going to be 4.2. And it must be 4.2, like plus minus 1%. It is quite critical. Uh, so all the lithium ion charger chips out there might be, say, half a percent accurate or uh, something like that. That. So we need to be fairly accurate on the voltage we're going to use to actually charge this thing and just any regular three and a half inch digital multimeter should be at least 0.5% accurate so it's going to be good enough for the purpose. In addition to the voltage, we also need to know the charging rate, nominal charging rate. In this case, the charging standard rate is 16 to uh, 1625 milliamps or what's called 0.5 C because the capacity is 3200 milliamp hours. So we need to charge this at half of its nominal rated capacity or nominal rated current you just take away the hours there 3.4 uh 3400 milliamps is 3.4 amps we need to charge it at half that or uh 1.7 amps and charging lithium-ion batteries is a two-step process. As I said, I have a video explaining much more detail than this. There can be like a pre-charge section and all sorts of stuff. Anyway, this is a very simplistic thing. There's a constant current charge mode where, first of all, it charges at a constant current for a period of time, and then it goes into a constant voltage mode. And this, why, this is why these need intelligent charging ICs to charge these lithium-ion batteries. But our lab power supply by the, its very nature of having a constant current and constant voltage modes, is going to be able to intelligently do this for us, except it won't have an automatic cutout 
at the end. So what we've got here, voltage on the y-axis, time on the x-axis here. Now this blue curve here is the cell voltage. And let's say the battery is dead and it's like at 3.25 volts or whatever, okay? It's, it's a dead battery. And then we want to charge it up. So we have to charge it in constant current mode. This other y-axis here is current. So you can see this, this is the green is the current uh, used to charge the cell. So you can see it's a constant current. In this case, 0.5C, as we said before, or 1.7 amps. So we need to drive a constant current through this battery for a set period of time at 1.7 amps. And then if we do that, the voltage will naturally rise like this, rise, 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 until it hits that 4.2 volts that magic 4.2 volts cutout voltage, which as I said, is quite critical. Otherwise you can damage the cell, it can explode and heat up, do all sorts of horrible things you don't want to know about. So you need to detect when it's at 4.2 volts and then switch into constant voltage mode like this, where then when we're putting a constant voltage on it, the current will naturally drop down like this. And then the cutoff point is usually typically around like 10% of the charge current, for example. So, you know, 170 milliamps, for example, might be a cutoff thing. It doesn't show you that here. But anyway, there's different schemes for that. But that's the basic two-step charging process. And the great thing about using a lab power supply like this is that they have constant voltage and constant current modes. So we can set our voltage, our maximum output voltage of, you guessed it, 4.200 volts. And this is quite an accurate power supply, this uh, Rigol DP835. It's like 0.05% accurate. So yeah, we can be pretty confident that 4.2 is going to be 4.2 for our purposes. More than good enough, order of magnitude better than what we want. And then we need to set up our constant current mode or our maximum current that can be drawn of 1.7 amps or 0.5C for this particular cell. And the good thing about a lab power supply like this is it will automatically switch. It, it will never ever deliver more than 1.7 amps and it'll never ever deliver more than 4.2 volts. So if we go back to our graph here and have a look at it, this is exactly what we need it to do. In this mode here, because we've got it set to 4.2 volts maximum, in constant current, it'll draw that constant current. It'll try and draw more. When you initially switch it on, it'll try and draw more current, but it'll be limited by that 1.7 amps that we set. So we'll get that constant current mode, and then when it actually reaches 4.2 volts, the power supply won't let the voltage, that blue line, go any higher than that. So it will naturally limit that, and bingo, we will be in constant voltage mode. And if you actually had, a lot of power supplies will have a constant current mode led on here. They'll show you when they're in constant voltage or constant current mode. So lab power supplies are perfect for this sort of application. But as I said, the only thing it's not going to do is automatically cut out at the end. It could if you had some fancy pantsy programmable supply, which this one is, um, but I'm not going to use that because most people will not have a programmable supply. But look, the charging is specified at a maximum of four hours. So we can just set a uh, stopwatch uh, or a countdown timer for four hours and get it to go ping when it's finished. So I do happen to have a, an 18650 uh, battery holder lying around, so we can hook that up across here. Because as I said, the voltage across here is critical, but if you set your 4.2 volt limit on here, worst thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna get a voltage drop and you're gonna get a lower voltage on here, which isn't necessarily a problem, but, it's, but it can't go over 4.2. So you are actually protected, your cell's not gonna, not gonna explode on you. Okay, and we've got our uh, 4.2 volts maximum voltage set up there and our 1.7 amps. So let's go and switch this thing on and it will enter that first phase, that first constant current phase of this. So we should see it go to 1.7 amps and limit. So let's switch it on. Make sure you've got the battery around the right way. And let's switch it on. Bingo, 1.697 amps. And the other thing we want to do is to protect it, we want to uh, set our timer. So let's go in there. I set my timer to four hours. Let's start that. It'll count down. This will beep at me at the end of four hours because you don't want to leave this running overnight or something like that. You can overcharge the cell, damage it. You don't want to do that even though it's sort of a bit self-limiting. Just, yeah, you want to cut it off after about that nominal four hours. And you want to use your battery, don't you? 
But what you can see is that the voltage on the cell is slowly rising with that constant 1.7 amp uh, charge on there. So that's exactly what it's doing. It's charging at a fixed 1.7 amps because we set that and the voltage is slowly, slowly going to rise. And you'll find that after maybe, I don't know, time says 100 minutes here, whatever it is, um, it'll change depending on the cell and all sorts of stuff. And, and the initial uh, uh, discharge voltage and how much capacity was in there, etc. So it'll charge up until once it hits 4.2 volts, the power supply will automatically switch out of constant current mode and we'll have 4.2 volts on here and then we'll see the current start to drop. So I'll leave that running and get back to you. And after two hours, uh, we're still charging at uh, 235 milliamps. So there you go. We'll wait. I'll wait until it gets down to, I don't know, maybe 5% of the 1.7 amps or thereabouts. Sorry about the focus on this. I goofed it up. But you'll be able to see it uh, that little CC mark for constant current mode. And you'll be able to watch it switch to a constant voltage mode just there once it hits uh, 4.2 volts. And just over three and a quarter hours, oops, I stepped out and I let it go, um, well, further than I wanted, but it, it doesn't matter. It's down to 26 milliamps now, and that's only like 1.5% of our original charge current and that's probably as low as you need to go it's diminishing returns from this point most of the energy has been put back into this thing so leaving it longer is not going to help as i said anything under that 10 percent mark five percent maybe uh, would be a typical cutoff figure of that 1.7 amps that we were uh, charging at there so yeah we'll call it quits and you don't want to actually uh, trickle charge or float charge lithium ion batteries like this because it can actually uh, build up or plate the uh, lithium inside the metallic lithium inside the battery. And yeah, you don't want to do that. They're not designed for that. There are um, there are chipsets designed for float charging and they use like a pulse, uh, a slow pulse type uh, system, which I've mentioned in the previous video, I think. So yeah, you definitely don't want to leave this running overnight. Overnight probably won't, you know, it's not going to leak and, and damage your battery too much, but you don't want to, you know, leave it too much further. Anyway, you want to use your battery. So take it off once it drops below 5 or 10%. Yes, you can actually uh, take it off at any point during this charging process and use it. You could take it off when it switches from constant current to constant voltage charge mode, for example, and you might, but it's only going to have like half the capacity uh, put back into it or something of that order so you know it depends on how much charge you want to put in but as i said once you get below that five and ten percent five percent uh figure here of your uh half c charging or your charging rate then it is very much diminishing returns so at the end of that, we can just switch that off and bingo, we've got a fully charged battery, you little ripper. And yes, you'll see the voltage uh, slowly drop down and it'll stabilize at a particular uh, value. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that uh, video of how to charge a lithium ion uh, rechargeable battery, not lithium primaries. Definitely don't do this on lithium primary batteries like coin cells and other uh, type batteries. Uh, lithium ion rechargeable batteries with your bench power supply, you little ripper. If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up. Catch you next time. Hi, it's lithium ion battery tutorial time. There are actually two different types. Don't confuse these with lithium ion and lithium polymer because they're the same thing. In fact, they're the uh, new type of anode material. I won't go into the construction of batteries. You can look those up yourself. But the anode in there can use two different types of materials. This is uh, very simplistically, what's inside a lithium-ion charger 